And now, please let me introduce our next guest, uh, who is who is Dr. Yang from University of California, Los Angeles. We're also very happy to have you. Welcome. Thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. Um, I would like to thank the organizers to invite me and give me the opportunity to share with you our research today. We'll talk about creating in T cell anti tumor immunity and cancer immunotherapy. At this conference, we have here many, you know, good things about it, uh, creating, like how it uh, has been known in the past like to uh, build a muscle, you know, to improve sports and all those wonderful things and the other health you know, benefits. We also hear a lot of uh, uh, science about uh, uh, what exactly this- Dr. Yang, I apologize for interrupting you, but we can see your uh, screen. Can you please uh, share your slides with us? I oh. apologize. So let me- Can you see my screen now? Yes, we can see it now. Thank you so much. Thank you. Apologize. All right. Okay, well, uh, thank you very much. Like, uh, sorry for the uh, technical glitch. Uh, today, I would like to share with you uh, my research uh, about creating in T cell anti tumor immunity and cancer immunotherapy. So at this meeting, we hear many good things about uh, uh, the creating and the inner history, how it's commonly known, you know, to public for the uh, muscle building, for uh, improved sports performance, and we hear many good other, you know, health benefits creating can provide. We also hear many, you know, uh, scientific insights about creating, what this molecule is, how it's made, how it's metastasized um, in a cell and, and the, what, you know, the significance it is, you know, to a human body. My special research area is in tumor immunology and cancer immunotherapy. We are interested in studying the uh, metabolism control of the anti-tumor immune reactions. And this study uh, led us to discover creatine as an important energy source to power the T cell anti tumor immune response. The work I'm talking with you today, you know, has published um, on a JEM, it's a research article, and it's also reviewed uh, at a uh, piece of the review at the Nutrient uh, Journal, and that has been included in this very nice. A special edition, like organized by uh, Dr. Uh, Krager and the staff. The work has been uh, conducted by three uh, uh, very outstanding uh, researchers in my lab, uh, Dr. Stefano, DBS, Dr. Jesse, Xiaoyama, and Dr. Bodhi. So we'll start with ask the question, why? Why we are interested to study creating? And the reason is that uh, in a screening study, we find that the creating transporter gene is upregulated in tumor infiltrating immune cells. When we try to identify the new molecular control of the anti-tumor immune response, what we did is that we use the uh, animal model we grow tumor in the mice, we isolate the tumor and isolate the tumor infiltrating immune cells. Then we conducted a genomic you know, analysis. So we analyzed the gene expression level you know, of those uh, tumor immune, uh, infiltrating immune cells. We compare those cells with the gene expression profile that are not inside of the tumor and also in tumor-free mice. What we find is that uh, one gene creating transporter gene significantly upregulated in tumor infiltrating immune cells. So usually when we see that, it indicates that this gene may play a role 
in the anti-tumor immune response of those immune cells. We then go ahead to use this tool like uh, our immunologists you know, uh, like to use, biologists like to use. We obtained the creatine uh, transport knockout mice and we study the tumor growth in that mouse, see absent of the creatine transporter, whether that will impact the tumor growth. And indeed, that's the case. So here shows that if we compare the tumor growth in this case, we use a uh, B16 melanoma uh, model in B6 mice. So here like is a control and the red line is a uh, knockout mice. We find that the tumor growth is uh, speed up in the creating tr uh, transport knockout mice. And we go ahead to study is that indeed because of the immune reaction is impaired in those mice. So we look into the tumor, we look into the specific immune cell called the T cells, which are very important in control, directly attack tumor and the control tumor growth. What we find is that we can still find those T cells in tumor. So there's no problem for them to go to tumor. However, they did a very poor job over there. They cannot control the tumor growth well. And when we look into the uh, T cells, we find those T cells show um, energized, you know, uh, situation, you know, polarized situation. For instance, the exhaustion mark like a PD1, you know, significantly upregulated on those T cells. Then we ask whether creating uptake deficiency directly impair the anti-tumor T cell immunity because the results we obtain from the knockout mice, the deficiency impact every tissue and the cell of that mice. It can be immune cell, it can be the tissue situation, or it can be many type of the immune cell. We are particularly want to know that whether the uh, creating deficient, uh, uptake deficiency impact T cell immunity. What we did, we used another uh, tool like immunologists oftentimes use to specifically analyze T cell reaction. We utilize a uh, transgenic mouse model. Those mice, you know, carry a specific population of T cells, recognize fixed antigen. In this case, it's OT1 transgenic T cells that recognize a ovabimin gene. And we always express the ovabimin gene in the tumor model, make it an uh, example of uh, the tumor antigen in that case. And we isolate the uh, OT1 T cells from the Y type mice or from the knockout mice when we breed the TCR transgenic mice with the creating transport knockout mice. So now we isolate, isolate two types of T cells, right? So they are the same uh, tumor specific T cells. And the only difference between them is that uh, one carry the creating transporter can uptake creating normally. Another cannot uptake uh, creating normally. So they will not be able to utilize creating to power the reaction. Then we separately transfer those two type of T cells into the tumor bearing Y type of mice. And we compare the tumor growth and the immune reaction in those adoptively transferred mice. So keep in mind that in this adoptive transfer system, the, all the other conditions are the same between those two group of mice. The only difference is that in one mice, the tumor specific T cells have deficiency in their ability to optic creating. Okay, so what we find over here is that the, those T cells compared to the Y type counterpart is, has impaired ability to control tumor growth. So does tumor grow, you know, uh, more, uh, grow more in those mice? And also when we look at into the T cells, we find that those creatine transport deficient animals are um, 
choose that less uh, immune reaction and also, you know, the show more like exhausted uh, marker upregulation, like PD-1 upregulation. After we observe this, we are quite fascinated. We are saying since creating uptake is important for control the CD8 T cell and tumor response. But why? What happened at the molecular level? What we did is that we isolate the Y type for creating transport knockout CD8 T cells. We put those T cells in cell culture and we studied the various aspects of the T cell activation after the TCR stimulation. So what we find is that for the white type uh, CD8 T cells, immediately after the TCR stimulation, the cells start to upregulate the expression of the creatine transporter. And that has been uh, confirmed at the gene level messenger RNA expression and also at the protein level. And can directly compare the Y type and the creatine transport knockout cells shows a impaired response from almost every aspect of a T cell reaction. So creating knockout um, uh, cells shows a impaired proliferation. The viability seems apoptosis seems to be comparable, but all the other like uh, effect cytokine uh, production include the important cytokine like L2 interferon gamma. It's all impaired. And when we look at the other important cytotoxic molecule that allow T cell to kill tumor, including granum B, perforin, and we also find those effect cytotoxic molecules also, you know, production impaired in the knockout cells. We confirm that the uh, deficiency we observe uh, in the knockout cells is indeed because of the deficiency of this particular gene by uh, performing a compensation experiment. In the knockout cells, when we use gene delivery technology to force overexpression of creatine transporter in those cells, we show that we can rescue the phenotypes of those cells. So those evidence together confirm that a creatine transporter gene is upregulated after T cell activation, and then it contributes significantly to control the reaction of the T cells. Then a next step question is again, how, right? So we know creatine transporter is important for T cell reaction but exactly what it does, you know, to those T cells to really facilitate the activation. As you will, uh, have heard, you know, from this conference that creating is a very important energy, you know, resource, right? So by uh, transferring between the two forms, creating and uh, forceful creating, it serves as energy buffer pool to conserve the energy. And when the cell is in need or the body in need, and those uh, forceful creatine release the phosphate and in the form of ATP provide energy, the bioenergy to a cell for responding. In this case, we look into all the element of those energy uh, metabolism uh, reaction over here. And we confirmed that uh, the T cells uh, do express this critical enzyme, creating um, uh, for, uh, the uh, CKB you know, gene that really uh, control the transfer of the phosphate group and allow the energy buffering to happen. And we do find that the uh, two you know, enzymes that are responsible, you know, for synthesize and the making creating the uh, AGAT and GAMT 
is expressed at minimal level at the T cells. So confirm the um, understanding that uh, uh, creating the major, you know, uh, synthesized site is not the immune cells, is that kidney, kidney and the liver site. So T cells uh, need to depend on the transport to uptake creating from outside into the cell for them to use. And when we compare the Y type and the creating transport knockout cell, we did find that the knockout cell, you know, have reduced ATP level in the cells after the TCR stimulation. And we can, uh, analyzed the creating uptake inside of the cells and found indeed it's deficient in those knockout cells. And for the knockout cells, that's one way to rescue them, right? So by directly supplementing the ATP energy to them, if that's what missing, you know, for them. And indeed, if we supplement ATP back to the culture, we can partially re uh, rescue the phenotype of those cells. And that reflect by improved function of those cells by upregulating the activation marker and regain the effect T cell function. And we go ahead to uh, study like the downstream signaling paths, right? So what ATP can do. ATP can directly provide energy and it's an important resource for the fourth fit you know, group that is necessary for um, activating many of the critical signaling pathways downstream of TCR uh, stimulation. And we look at, at all those various you know, uh, signaling pathways and those um, critical players during that pathway. So the conclusion is the immediate signaling uh, transmit molecules that 70, the activation is very uh, critically regulated by the creating modulated ATP upregulation. And the, the downstream reflect as the NF kappa B, you know, pathway, uh, the NFAT pathway and the AP1, you know, pathway those transcription factors, you know, were, were, will be influenced by the creating, you know, metabolism in this process that overall together that uh, control the T cell activation. And I should have pointed out that uh, uh, compared to the other two signaling uh, molecules, NF kappa B uh, uh, change is uh, uh, kind of a, uh, uh, small, you know, compared to the NFAT signaling change and the AP1 signaling change. And it's interesting in a way, think about like nf B is such a fundamental, you know, signaling molecule. So maybe they have a certain, you know, uh, ability to tolerate the energy, you know, fluctuation. That's why they remain relatively stable. But the other two critical transcription factor in T cell sig uh, receptor signaling and activation is very uh, much like uh, up to creating upregulation. You know, it's NFAT and the AP1. And the ATP also involved in the other signaling path, like the AMPK signaling path. And that's also important for the T cell activation. And the lack of the ATP, you know, uh, and the lack of the creating, you know, buffering, energy buffering that uh, impact the AMPK pathway that also contribute to the uh, regulating the function of a T cell. After we learned all of those, then we ask them what? That it's uh, very good. We find that creatine is um, important for T cell reaction, right? So can we use this knowledge, you know, to really help the immune reaction, like help the T cell to battle, you know, cancer? Now we ask like whether creatine supplementation can really be used for cancer immunotherapy. For this, we performed the study, you know, it's again, we use the uh, tumor model. Here shows that uh, the B16, you know, uh, over melanoma model, we supplement the animals with uh, creating either through the food supplementation or directly through the IP injection, mimicking the IV delivery in human in the future. 
So we found that both delivery route, either through the um, uh, through the food supplementation or directly uh, IP injection, it can really help to control the tumor growth. When we look into the T cells in those treated mice, we find that uh, the creating a uh, treatment really help to increase the function of those T cells. And here shows that uh, the uh, based on the uh, receptor, uh, based on the uh, receptor uh, surface markers, like those T cells should less exhaustion phenotype compared to the mice not receive creating supplementation. And uh, the, uh, as a positive control, we also looked into the muscle of those uh, tumor bearing mice. We find that the creating supplementation indeed, you know, increase the muscle, uh, the size of the muscle fiber, confirming the uh, uh, muscle enhancement function of creating. And uh, this is an interesting, you know, phenomenon because many of the uh, cancer patient, especially the late stage cancer patient, suffer from, from the cacacia. So like the loss of weight, you know, this is also a significant health problem for those patients. And if creating supplementation, you know, can uh, contribute to both sides, both enhance their anti-tumor uh, immune reaction, and meanwhile also treat cacacia, you know, that would be very nice. Uh, we um, also uh, go ahead, you know, to study uh, whether uh, the creating supplementation directly work on the immune, you know, cells uh, on controlling the tumor growth. It's not because it directly work on the tumor cells in this particular case. So we grow the tumor instead of in a uh, uh, immune competent animal, or we grow in immunodeficient animal, in this case, NSG animal. And in this case, we find that at least in this model, the creating supplementation did not really change the uh, tumor growth. So in this case, what the, we observed, the benefit of the tumor suppression indeed is acting through the immune system. And uh, Next, we asked that uh, whether T cell is a major player in this case, because that immune cell can contain T cells, microphages, dendritic cells, NK cells, and many other types of immune cells, right? So when we, in this particular model, when we use uh, depletion antibody to deplete T cells, we find that the tumor uh, uh, control benefit is uh, largely lost. So which uh, indicate that uh, T cell is the major you know, type of immune cell that benefit from the creating supplementation in this case. Then what we uh, care and a lot of people really care about is that for the cancer immunotherapy, whether creating can really be used uh, for the combination treatment to help the condition, you know, like the other immunotherapy is not, you know, uh, achieving the, uh, the most uh, desirable benefits, right? So there are um, a big improvement for the uh, cancer immunotherapy in the past 15 years and the success of the uh, immune checkpoint blockade therapy, like PD-1, you know, blockade therapy, CTR-4 blockade therapy, really revolutionize the treatment of many cancers. However, not all cancer patients can benefit from those um, treatment, and uh, a, uh, many types of the cancer, actually the response of rate is quite low. And even for the patient can benefit from the immune checkpoint blockade therapy at the beginning, many of them, you know, suffer from the tumor relapse at the end. So we ask whether adding creating, you know, supplementation to the regimen, like can uh, help to improve the uh, immune checkpoint blockade therapy to allow it to uh, treat more patient and maybe achieve 
longer lasting benefit. So for this um, um, uh, concept, we go ahead to, again, use the, um, the animal model we talked about, and we treat the animal with a different condition, right? We treat either, you know, with creatine alone, with anti-PD-1, you know, treatment alone, or the combination of the anti-PD-1 treatment plus the creatine supplementation. So the result is quite encouraged, okay? In this, uh, we did uh, the study, performed the study in two uh, tumor models. One is the melanoma model we described before, and another is the MC38 colon cancer model. And here is the data shows that from the colon cancer model is quite uh, uh, impressive results. So the anti, uh, the creating treatment alone by itself can significantly suppress the tumor growth. Okay, so anti-PD-1, you know, alone can also significantly suppress tumor growth. However, only the combination of both achieved the elimination of the tumor at the end, and the mice remain tumor-free, you know, for a longer period of time. So this indicates that, you know, creating supplementation in combination with the existing uh, immune checkpoint blockade therapy may have a, a synergistic effect and overall improve the cancer immunotherapy uh, efficiency. So at the end, I would like to summarize you know, our study into this model to elaborate what we find about how creating, you know, regulate the anti-tumor T cell reaction. So in a tumoring environment, that the um, the T cell uh, think about like a car, right? So like car take uh, bio uh, the chemical fuels to um, run the engine and keep the car running, and T cells in a tumor environment need to uptake the biofuels to fuel their you know, bio engine, really to supply the biofuel in the form of ATP to keep the T cell reaction going. The biofuel include glucose, amino acid, lipids, and others, right? Those get into the cells and through the uh, TCA cycle or the glycolysis and break down and uh, to produce the ATP to supply the cells. And those are, you know, uh, you can think of them as a fuel engine, the molecular fuel engine of a T cell. Creating work in a different way. So creating more work like the uh, molecular battery, you know, uh, of like a battery of a hybrid car, right? So like uh, what it does, it, it buffering the energy. So when creating is uptake into a T cell through the tumor environment where the creating transporter, it uh, store, you know, uh, uh, energy in the form of phosphor creating, like you can think it as a molecular battery, right? So when the uh, energy, the biofuel is limiting, it is because in the tumor environment that uh, immune cells need to compete heavily with tumor cells, right, for those energy, and it can be lacking for them. So when the molecular fuel engine work is a suboptimal, and then the uh, bio, the molecular battery will kick in and the, the buffering energy will help the T cell to maintain the function, okay? So creatine can be obtained from the food source, can be from the supplement, and uh, in the future, so maybe the clinical interventions will be more ideal, right? So a carefully designed dose and the delivery route and in combination with the um, other immuno, uh, uh, therapy treatment like uh, uh, immune checkpoint blockade therapy may really give the best benefit to patient. So take home messages, creating works as a molecular battery conserving power energy to power anti tumor T cell immunity and creating supplementation can improve T cell based cancer immunotherapy. I'll stop over here and I'll be happy to answer the questions uh, at the uh, panel session. Thank you for your attention.